Welcome to Encounter the Word. We at the Jesuit Institute offer this reflection every Sunday on the Liturgy of the Word, where we try to make sure that our reflection on God's Word helps us live God's Word in our daily lives. And so, let's pray together. Lord God, we give you thanks that we can gather as a community to reflect upon your word and how your word invites us to respond at this moment in our lives and the life of our community and our society. Help us through our listening to deepen our ability to hear what you want of us so that we might live this word in practical ways in the days that are to come. We ask this in the name of Jesus the Lord. Amen. Amen. The beginning of the Acts of the Apostles. In the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach until the day when he was taken up, after he had given commandment through the Holy Spirit to the apostles whom he had chosen. To them he presented himself alive after his passion with many proofs, appearing to them during forty days, and speaking of the kingdom of God. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, and before many days you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know times or seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And when he had said this, and as they were looking on, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. And while they were gazing into heaven as he went, behold, two men stood by them in white robes and said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking into heaven? This Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him going into heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God has gone up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. God God has gone up with shouts of joy. The The Lord Lord goes up with trumpet trumpet blast. All peoples, clap your hands. Cry to God with shouts of joy. For the Lord, the Most High, is awesome, the great King over all the earth. God has gone up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. God goes up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. Sing praise for God, sing praise. Sing praise to our God. Sing praise. God God has gone up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. God is king of all the earth. Sing praise with all your skill. God reigns over the nations. God sits upon his holy throne. God God has gone up with shouts of joy. The Lord goes up with trumpet blast. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. May the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him, having the eyes of your hearts enlightened, that you may know what it is, what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance in your saints? And what are the immeasurable greatness of his power in us 
who believe, according to the working of his great might, which he accomplished in Christ when he raised him from the dead and made him sit at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head of all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Go and make disciples of all nations, says the Lord. I am with you always to the close of the age. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord is with you. And with your spirit. The conclusion of the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. At that time, the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain to which Jesus had directed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and said to them, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always, to the close of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the readings we have just heard for the Feast of the Ascension, it is the first reading that addresses the ascension specifically. In fact, this event is only described by Luke in two different versions, one at the end of the Gospel of Luke and the other, the one we have just heard in the Acts of the Apostles. The ascension is a very important hinge on which Luke attaches the Gospel to Acts in the first volume, Luke penned, he focused on Jesus so that we could get to know him intimately. In the second volume, which we have been reading every day of the week, all through this Easter period, the focus is on the church so that we can become it. At the end of the first volume, Jesus' story, and at the beginning of Acts, the church's story, the ascension of Jesus is told, a repetition that underlines its centrality. The ascension tells how Jesus ascended bodily into heaven 40 days after his resurrection. His ascension might have left a gaping hole in human existence. However, Jesus' mission was to form a body that would represent him in the world represent him. This means that the body that steps into the absence of Jesus makes him present again. That body is us. Wow, what a hefty responsibility. We are called to go out and fill the world with his presence by speaking as he spoke, by acting as he acted, by loving as he loved. As we gather on a Sunday at the Eucharistic celebration, we are reminded that the very source of this mission is unfolding here and now. We come again to listen to Jesus' voice resounding in the scriptures. We come to recognize his body in the bread and wine. We come to consume what we must become, the representation of Christ for the world. On this day, we do not stand gazing into the sky, trying to catch a last glimpse of him. Rather, 
we must prepare ourselves to step into his footsteps and go out to proclaim the kingdom of God. Although our gospel passage from Matthew today does not speak of the ascension, it does offer a very important perspective on our mission in the world. Jesus, encountering his disciples on the mountain after his resurrection, sends his disciples into the world and makes a firm promise that we must remember and nurture. Behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. A particular feature of Matthew's narrative of Jesus is that from the time of his conception, he has two names, Jesus, signifying he will save his people from their sins, and Emmanuel, signifying God is with us. Jesus' promise to his disciples draws on this second name, I am with you. In Jesus, God is with us always, as he must be if we are to make him present. Of course, on the Feast of the Ascension, we are already preparing for the gift of Jesus' spirit that we receive at Pentecost next week. Only in that spirit can we do what we are called to do, make Jesus present in a world that needs him as much today as it did back then, if not even more. The second reading from the Epistle to the Ephesians makes this even more explicit. Whilst Jesus is seated at the right hand of God in the heavens, God has put all things beneath his feet and gave him as head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of the one who fills all things in every way. This is the image that we are invited to keep in mind. We are the body whose head is at the right hand of our Father in heaven. The head is what commands the body. We are here on earth. The body is filled with the spirit of the head and becomes a living being, setting out to proclaim the good news that death, sin, and darkness have already been vanquished to bring consolation and healing, to work for justice, peace, and equality. Indeed, just before the ascension, Jesus says to his disciples, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, throughout Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. The Acts of the Apostles describe how the disciples become apostles and fill the earth with good news all the way to Rome and beyond. The mission goes on until today, as we will also go out into the world after Mass and fill our homes, our neighborhoods, our city, and our country with good news. We are called to be witnesses. In Greek, martyrs. Our martyrdom is to give our lives to the proclamation of the good news of victory over death in all we do. In its simplest form, this martyrdom, this witness, is to walk with our heads held high, full of the knowledge that death has been vanquished and radiant with the joy of Easter. Let's join in praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await 
the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and, and the glory are yours, now and, and forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Let's pray, friends. Lord, we give you thanks that we could encounter your word, that we could reflect upon your word. And help us now to deepen our reflections as we try to live out the invitation that you have for each one of us. And in so doing, become your faithful disciples. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us, and we hope to have you reflecting with us again next week.